that's yeah. where it kind of my gypsy jazz education uh, was kind of formed. Wow. So you're so you're basically you're. I mean, I'll say I'll say jazz because I'd say that gypsy jazz and jazz are just jazz. They're just the um, same. Yeah. Uh, um, but your jazz your jazz playing was formed on gigs a lot of it. Yes, but of course, I, I then, if there were things that I that didn't work, I would get frustrated and, and work things out at home. So I would practice. Mm -hmm. And for instance, one of the things that really interested me was that when the first time I started playing with the Rosenberg Trio, uh, they all their tempos were higher than Fappy's tempos, <laughs> yeah. which meant I was not used to playing their kind of tempos. So I had yeah. to rethink and discover, you know, what is it that makes you play fast how do you do this and it just meant practice sessions at home with a metronome yeah uh, on one chord just getting my finger and my bow fingers left hand uh, and my bow moving fast enough yeah. and then to relax into that so you actually get a relaxed approach which is which is what stefan grappelli what made him so great he was never tense yeah yeah so um when in terms of practice uh, what are some of the things that you remember helped you when you were first looking at learning a tune uh well fappy always said learn the melody really properly so uh you would listen to stefan grappelli play it and then you'd realize well yes he's playing the melody half sort of half the melody yeah. but then he's improvising already because he of his generation everybody kn knew those tunes so he yeah. could be very very um sort of free-flowing when he played a melody and people would recognize it. That's no longer yeah. the case. Mm -hmm. So we're now actually looking at ancient music, you know, yeah. in terms of Gershwin and Cole Porter. So it actually, when I was playing with Fappy, I was actually going back to the source and, and learning the melody properly and listening to other types of jazz players, jazz singers like Ella Fitzgerald. Mm. Um, actually, going back to basics and discovering what's a great bass line. Well, Ray Brown is a nice template for that. Yeah. Uh, what's a great accompaniment? Uh, Barney Kessel is a great mm. template for that. Yeah. Uh, what's great soloing? Well, Stefan Grappelli had some great, great soloing, but his best periods, I found out, were late 60s when he made a few albums with Barney Kessel, early uh -huh. 70s when I was he was playing with piano and drums with yeah. Alan Clare in England, in London, who was a very, very sensitive accompanist who was perfect for Grappelli. And yeah. then the very early days with the uh, with the Hot Club of London with Diz Disley. That was oh, actually yeah. his best, finest period. He was in his mid-60s uh, being rediscovered. So he was like really excited um, mm -hmm. because he'd been basically a, an anonymous player for so long after Django Reinhardt died. Yeah. Uh, or even after the war because in the war they kind of split up uh, when yeah. Grappelli stayed in London and, and Django went back to France. Um, and he'd been very famous with Django. So he had this massive you know, two decades of, of anonymity. And then suddenly he burst back on the scene through this guy, Diz Disley and, and, and Alan Clare, Edinburgh Jazz Festival, Cambridge Folk Festival. And he mm -hmm. got on the television in England and he got massive in England before any uh, any success elsewhere, even France, where he was from. Yeah. And he actually practically moved to England. So that period, the 60s and 70s for Grappelli, I actually started focusing on that as as a template for phrasing and 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 then of course i started listening much more to the other violinists um joe venuti who was of course the guy who influenced grappelli so much and grappelli mm -hmm. stole so much from joe venuti <laughs> yeah, totally. to joe venuti's annoyance because grappelli got much more famous yeah but you know it's it's like it's like investigating you're doing research so that's yeah. also part of my practice is is listening and going why is this guy famous and why is this other other guy not so famous and i found yeah. out well the difference between stefan grappelli and joe venuti is grappelli has a much more flowing technique he is sounds much more relaxed joe venuti sounds tense when he plays yeah and uh, people don't like tense they like relaxed they like people who are in, in, in control I mean, I'm generalizing a little bit. Joe Venuti had some wonderful stuff, of course. Sure, yeah. I know what you mean now. But when you look at Venuti in the bowing, the bowing of Venuti is a bit more like the bowing of, let's say, somebody like Yehudi Menuhin. Lots of bow. And that means that when you get older, your arm's not as, as strong. Uh, you start sort of cracking up. Grappelli used tiny amounts of bow. When he was 80, he could still do the same as when he was 50. 
mm. because he dev devised this very efficient uh, technique that could be played with a very relaxed arm and very little movement. Yeah. And so a very subtle style. So th that for me was actually most important that I actually started to discover you're a classical player, you're using lots of bow, and that's completely wrong for this type of rhythm music. So yeah. I started practicing bowing, just, sh I call it slow bowing, uh, just patterns, things yeah. from Grappelli solos, uh, licks, copying little phrases, uh, and then trying to put them in a tune. And there were not really, we're talking about 20 years ago, so the internet was, well, not 20, but maybe 15 years ago. The internet was not uh, full of backing tracks like it's now. So yeah. I had to kind of devise my own backing tracks or play along with the original recordings, which is actually a much better exercise than you would think, because yeah. you actually learn to follow the flow of a recording, the not perfectly metronomical <laughs> A time feel uh, because sometimes something will speed up a little bit and yeah. that actually happens for a reason um, and to, to look at dynamics phrasing all the things that Fappy was really always thinking of when I was working with him yeah yeah okay and so that was, that was about 15 years ago you say 